Ping Chang is an old friend uh, and uh, how should we call her? A commune? How should I call you? A teacher uh, and an environment lover. And so, Tan Ping Chang, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. Thank you. Um, I, Jeffrey and I went to okay, okay, him, yeah, it was way back when he was a young kid, maybe younger than all of you here. And I was a young teacher, that's where we met. Um, surprisingly, in the theatre, um, because he was helping out with some theatre, and I was, despite being a teacher then, I was crazy enough at night to do plays with practice theatre and had a great honour of working with Mr. Paul Pao Kun. So, but my journey now deviates towards environment because I think that the time we have is running out. So that's where my time now we going to spend besides teaching. So I'm going to do a very teacher thing. Let's play Kahoot. <laughs> Today, do you think all the greeneries in Singapore are equal? So, which labelled portion in the map here is pull out moving? <laughs> oh, here, here, A, B, C, or D. Oh, I'm so sorry. They really need to see the screen. Oh, no. oh. And it has to be very fast. Sorry. I'm so mean to my students that they see it now. They have to think very fast. We some of the islands in have reclaimed, for example, Simakau, right? So you can see that this is Pulau Ubi on top. This is Tokong, where most of the boys may know you will spend your time there. This Simakau is where all the trash and the ash will end up being buried here. And this area here is Jurong Island, artificial island. Um, and I'll talk about the shape of Singapore later on. Um, okay, so next question coming up. Which labor part is Sungai Bulo Wetland Reserve? On top here, B, C, D, or below here, A? <laughs> okay! I will show you the, the map again. Um, you only gave me 15 minutes. <laughs> B here is actually Sungai Bulo. Um, it's okay you got it wrong because after today you can go home and Google and start looking at Singapore on its own. So you can see that if, even though we are quite big, um, this area here is central catchment area. It's gazetted as nature reserve. Then here, Bukit Timah Nature Reserve. And here, a tiny little sliver, Labrador Park, is also gazetted. And up there just now, where y'all chose Sungai Bulo, is gazetted. These only four nature reserves in Singapore gazetted. Gazetted means if the government really wants to take back the land, they just have to ask permission to another government person who is the commissioner of trees, and then it can be developed. Okay, so so if you're interested, we are having, oh, the not talk yet. Which labelled option is Singapore River? That should be quite easy. Here, D, C, A, or B. Okay. <laughs> that is a bit difficult because these two rivers here are very close. This is Singapore River. This one goes up to Bishan Park, where you see people say where, where Kalang comes to you. I stay at Bishan, and one day they say the Kalang is coming to me. They're like, no, this. This Longkang had been in my place for the longest time. The Longkang was actually the Kalang River that used to flow there before it was converted into a big, big Longkang. Okay. So, next quiz. Which reservoir is this? So it's easier now. You can see there are quite a few areas here. Right now. This one, the lowest one nearest to town. That's my clue to you. 
Selita, Macritchie, Pierce, or Tena? It's Macritchie. So the, the reservoir near the town, you can remember that, that's Macritchie Reservoir. And the oldest one is actually the lower Pierce there. Tena Reservoir is now going to be very famous because it has huge area that has um, solar panels. You may have read it in the papers. We don't have enough land to have solar panels. We are now going into the water areas and the reservoir is one of the areas. So you can see we actually have 17 reservoirs in Singapore, including the island, we also have one. And we don't count the small, small one, like OBS actually has a, their own little reservoir in Putin, but we don't count them because that's not for national use. So the Tengah one that I shared here, this is the one that will already have all the solar panel, and you will see that more of our reservoir will be covered by solar panel. So if you want to explore, do you think it's a good idea? There are so many solar panels floating and anchored down in our reservoir. Do we have a choice not to have that? Okay. How much forest and natural habitats have we lost since the pre-medieval time? 25%, 75%, 50% or 95%? We have lost actually 95% of the time. So the, that's the amount of um, natural area that we have lost in Singapore. Um, whoa, advantage is really spinning ahead. How many percentage of our land area in, is forest reserve in Singapore today? 0.25%, 25%, 15% or 35%? Well, yeah, you only have 0.25% because just now I showed you, right, four little space left. So only 0.25% is nature reserve. The rest are not protected or protected for protection. So you can see here, this is what Singapore used to look like pre medieval time, even pre Raffles Landing. You can see the whole place is more than marshland. Later on, maybe I, I have a better um, picture to show you. You can see that but because Singapore, look at this, we have actually a lot of rivers. That's why we have a lot of drains in Singapore. And when you have a river, it means next to it, it used to be marshland. So we are actually a swamp. They always like to call Singapore a swamp, right? It's true. We have a lot of nice fresh water swamp. But today, we have very little fresh water swamp left in Singapore because all the inland, every area has been filled up, either be a reservoir or built up we hardly have any fresh water swamp. So it's not habitat for me. The most dangerous or a critically endangered type of habitat is freshman um, swamp areas. So our, this one's not very clear. Hopefully I have, you notice that our, this map that's going up is not a population. But our land mass in Singapore has been increasing. And I always tease my students to say that, when you look at this, the old map of Singapore has this natural curvy wavy line. The new map of Singapore, if you use a ruler to draw, because these are so straight, we reclaim it so straight. You can see here, Jurong Island, Tuas and all this. You can draw with a ruler, I'm serious. Go home and go and look at Singapore today. We have increased this area, it looks very different now. And as the land mass increases, however, our natural area, in terms of protected area, didn't increase very much. So we'll talk about that a little bit after this. True or false, that's very far. Nature reserves, nature parks, and parks uh, have the same rules and protection status in Singapore. <laughs> yeah, false. Um, so some people always say like, why can't I bring my dog to um, Dairy Farm Nature Park? Because they're all parks, right? This is one of the commonest bird found in Singapore. What is the common name for this bird? Do you see? It's the second most common bird in Singapore. Confess if you have not seen it. <laughs> I know you only see minor than pigeon or all that, but this is a very abundant bird in Singapore. It has red eyes, so some people are quite afraid of it. It's actually the Asian glossy starling. Um, next time you see a flock of black birds, they are starlings. They are not minors. 
they are not so well. I will show you later on um, in my slide. So they look like this. So this is, if you look very carefully, actually it's not black because you're all art students, artists. You notice that if you stare at them and the sun is shining, they have this very nice glossy greenish tinge to it. And these are other blackbirds. Pro is also not entirely black. House Pro has certain gray areas. And this other bird that's also black with red eyes is a corel, the one that wakes you up in the morning. You go, woo, woo. That is also a black bird, but it has a longer tail and it's a cuckoo bird. So I'll talk more about it if I have time to learn. Whole time. How many local animals can you name by the common names? Up to you to choose. Less than 5, 6 to 10, 11 to 19, or above 20. Local animals. Okay, that's, that's quite uh, a reflection of most Singaporeans in Singapore. To what degree are you interested in the issue of the environment? Extremely interested, interested, not very interested, not interested. <laughs> then I know whether I should pack out or go home or not, Jeffrey. <laughs> Thank you for this because it helps me to say, think about what I'm going to say later on in the next 10 minutes. Okay. Do you think problems associated with the environmental issues will improve or get worse over the next 20 years? Uh, improve, stay about the same, get worse, downhill and no turning back. I think this will help you to have a sense of all your friends here, how they perceive the environmental issue. I thought this question may help you. Interesting, as you can see, there's a quite nice mix of different opinions. Where do you think we're heading towards? Um, of course, some people feel like, what for we do anything? There's no turning back anyway. But I think everybody has been saying that we are over the tipping point. It's, the time is now, the time is now for the last five years. So. We will see. I'm an optimist, so I will always think that's the hope. Do you think your actions directly or indirectly contribute to the environmental issues? I hope some of these poll questions will help you in your discussion later on when you're creating your artwork. Okay, that's quite interesting. I, I can send uh, Jeffrey the data at the end if you think it helps and you all can analyze it further. Um, how willing would you be to accept cuts in your standard of living in order to protect the environment? Fairly willing, fairly... Oh, I look too fairly willing. It should be um, fairly willing and this one willing. Blue is willing, sorry. Fairly unwilling and fairly... And extremely unwilling, sorry. You can tell I just did it this morning. <laughs> okay, nice. Okay, so that's all I have. Shall we announce the winner? Green Bean, yay! And post 204, 4295. What are those interesting numbers? Is it 4D? <laughs> okay. Thank you for the indulgence. Um, but I, I do think that it helps you to think about um, how much you really know about Singapore. Um, it is not to make you feel bad that there are things about Singapore you don't know. Um, there's always a standing joke about how we know more about certain other countries about our own country. And sometimes it's true. So I'll show you this map here which is a, a, a friend of mine did it, um, David Tan. He actually studies birds. And the brown area here shows that these were the areas that used to be green. But in the recent last few months, we noticed that there have been a lot of reports that they're going to build HDB areas because so many people that's oversubscribed. So we need to build more HDB. So Rangoon area, Tagore, that was in the news. Clemente Wood, that was also in the news, the Bukit Brown area, Inyon area, and of course the, the North Forest. This whole area is what we used to call the Western Catchment area, and 
is really it will end up this is going to be HDB area and half of it will be for industry area. So this is the plan. You may not live to see it, but you will definitely be around when this happens. So this is what's going to happen and this we already have lost 29.5. With this development, I feel that our green areas will further decline. In terms of natural habitat, not green corridor kind of things. Can we have a nice time? Can you signal me? Okay. Okay. So this is the nature reserve. So a friend of mine called it the green heart in the red dot because it's right in the center. That's why it's called the um, central catchment area. And these are all the habitats that we have lost. What we have left is all the yellow thing at the side because we have left with. 25%, right? So why do we want to have these green areas? Because the green areas or the habitat for me, you know, reduce noise, cooling, it, it's mitigation for climate change, habitat for biodiversity, and then of course, slow down ponding and flooding, because it takes time to percolate into the soil as opposed to go into a long time, right? But the other thing that's very important for us is that the sense of connection for me, it's always a building or a place. And I go to Marichi all the time. I'm so happy it's still Marichi because my dad used to bring me there when I was a kid. Every time I go there, I think of my dad. It's, it's a place where I connect with it. And it's also, but I, when we live in a too urbanized place, we lose that sense of connection because we're not used to natural environment. My students scream when they see a butterfly. Hmm. Okay, they are so afraid of insects. When the ants come pouring in, they want <laughs> instinctively <laughs> like that. And so um, there's a lot of disconnects I can see as a teacher to the years. So and nature can be a cohesive thing to bond people together. And I think COVID has shown us that people need the green environment. Right? And of course, here is all the money talks about it. We know that carbon trading, it improves health life. People always say that it's good for the eyes, it's good for the soul, that's into now forest bathing, all this kind of thing. This is what Singapore is. This is a concept map that I took from URA, you can go and have a look. This is our development plan. This year, the government is also planning for the next 10 years. Do go in and give your feedback. What kind of Singapore you would like to have? In mind that this is in the plan. I can tell you, Maybe 20 years ago, HDB was supposed to be in Pulau Ubin. We were so upset. We say no, we don't want HDB in Ubin. And today, Ubin is going to be left to be a rustic place. Fingers crossed, right? So your input will help. Okay? And as artists, maybe in your own way, you can help promote it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Right? So if we have only 0.25% left, how can we make sense of it? this area. So I was just talking to you just now about this. You can see for yourself how angular Singapore is. We have planned to increase our area some more. Anything in the north? No. Tunia, Malaysia will not happen. We can expand more on the south. So these are all the animals and plants that um, have disappeared from Singapore. I'll just show you a few that have been lost. If you do not know, we used to have tigers. I think some of you know. We used to have actually leopard. They are gone also. We used to have this giant squirrel at this side, which is cream colored one. Malaysia still had it. Blind foxes, um, the crowded leopard, of course. So these are now still found in Singapore, critically endangered. One of my favorite is leopard cat, of course. Very, very few individuals. I think 30 something left, but most of them in Tokong Island. The good thing about it being an army land is that the wildlife actually are protected. So it's, it's nice in that sense. The Ruffles Lander Langa, um, we've been trying to get it. Scientists claim that it's actually a separate species and nowhere else in the world you can find it except Singapore and Johor. Only these two places have this, this cute Langa with the white circle ring. So a so big pet and all these. And so these are critical and endangered. So these were the birds that I was trying to show you. All black birds uh, actually looks quite different. So the miners, the common miner is not common in Singapore. It's the Java miner that you usually see. The, the Java miner is trapped in, in Java. They have been captured until that they hardly any left.
So we talk about like, is it possible for us to catch all the German miners here, which is in excess, and ship them all to Indonesia? Well, I don't think so. Ecologically, that's going to be a huge issue. So, so these are all the birds. So if you're interested after this talk, you may want to start going out to have a look. So I just would like to play you this little clip. So this is from Mothership. Um, the story of the crow and the corral. You recognize the call, right? So why is it that in the recent decades we keep hearing this quite often? And it is because it's a cuckoo. It has helped us to arrest the population. The female looks like this and the call is different. The noisy one is the male for a change, not the female. And what it does is, being a cuckoo, it kicks up the crow babies and then lay their own egg there. And the crows are tricked to feed the coral so the coral can develop and grow. So this is one of the reasons this is one of the reasons why the population has increased so much that you can hear it everywhere. So it's not doom and gloom in Singapore. I feel that something we did very well. We have actually started to discover a lot of new species, 480 new species. That is quite an achievement. These are all the wildlife and that is found and some discovered. And I can proudly tell you that whatever we have here in Singapore, it is more than what you get in Yellowstone Nature Park. Okay, we have more species of trees here in Singapore than the whole of Europe. Species, not species, not by sheer number. So it, it, it shows me that we have a very important role and we, we should be very proud of all these things. However, this is not what we are proud of. They are slowly being killed because of habitat loss, due to development, poaching, people still poach them, and condition. Either because your building is has a lot of glass, the, the uh, blood just fly into it, and this is a, a collision kill. And this one is, of course, roadkill. So roadkill is going to be more because there are more, more development coming up. Okay, I should end this here. And um, so I'll stop the stories from this. So I just want to end up with this. Singapore plays a very important role, not just because of us, but because the birds do use us as a stopover. And we are part of this East Asian Asia flyover. If we were to develop our areas too much, these migratory birds have no place to stop over. They will die of exhaustion because there's no place to rest, no place to feed on. And all our neighbours are also developing. So we need to say that we will save some parts, not for Singapore, but for the rest of the world and also for the birds. So I will end up with here. Thank you. If you need to know more about it, through Jeffrey, you can contact me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dave.